Got the squad here. We're heading to uh, where are we heading, Perry? We are headed to um, where are we headed? <laughs> you don't know, John. Where are we heading? A uh, little pond. A little pond. All right. pond. Is that where you caught a uh, fish yesterday? Yeah, this is where I caught my. Oh, we were, no, we're going to a new pond. Oh, yeah, we're going to a new pond. All right. This pond was trash. Okay, new there pond. Was, there was trash floating in this pond. Yeah. Got John over here. What are you tying on, man? A little jig. What's the plan for the uh, pond? How are you gonna break it down? I'm gonna jig it up, throw some swim jigs, bottom bounce, you know, a little bit of everything. Sounds good. Perrick's tying on. What are you throwing first, man? The red eye shad. Hey, who do you think is gonna catch the biggest fish today? Uh, definitely not John. <laughs> that's the only. That's the only thing I know. Okay. Dude, I just dropped a. So first time fishing Oklahoma, we got this uh, pond, pretty big pond here. It uh, seemed to be shallow, murky water. Uh, I haven't checked the water temp yet, but I'm guessing it's in the mid 50s. So I'm starting with a, uh, everyone's throwing a jig and I'm throwing a rattle trap. Those are basically the two baits I'd go to for fishing a pond like this. We're gonna go ahead and see uh, who can hook up first and see what kind of fish we have in here, if there's any. There's one. Fish on! That's a good one! Good fish! First fish in Oklahoma. Good fish right here. Hit that quarter ounce lipless crankbait. It's a big fish. It's a good fish right here. Oh, dude. First Oklahoma bass. This is awesome. Just fishing shallow against those rocks. Oh, it's a good fish. What is this? Oh, yeah. It's a big fish. That's what I'm talking about. Got him. Ah. Quarter ounce flipless crankbait. Oh, dude, he, look, check it out, guys. He's got a bluegill in his mouth right there. A bluegill in his mouth. This guy is fat and chunky. Damn, dude. <laughs> All right. How many pounds is that? Do uh, I don't have a scale with me, but she's pretty fat. I'd get four and a half, maybe. I'd say four yeah, four and a half. Definitely. It's definitely almost. Five. Yeah, it's almost. Yeah. Five. Go ahead and let her go. Beautiful fish. I saw you crouch down like you just. <laughs> oh, dude, this rock is shaking. Well, <laughs> let her go. There she goes. <laughs> Whew, man. So here's the bait of choice. A quarter ounce, sexy shad colored, lipless crank. And I only brought four baits with me because I'm traveling right now. And it just happened to be perfect. We're fishing a shallow pond with, uh, with uh, murky water. And you know, everyone's doing the same thing, covering the bank. And that's exactly what I would do. Fishing a new pond, just cover the bank, fish shallow. That fish right there, it hit one time. I made a cast right parallel to these rocks. It hit it. I made five more casts and uh, she finally took it and just smoked this little, uh, little little bait and make sure you guys change the hooks on these strike kings because if i didn't change those hooks those could have easily been bent out so glad to land that first fish and uh, let's see if we can catch some more so we're at a new pond now tim caught a six pounder at the last pond one of the uh, mtb staff members Perrick, why are we at a new pond we had a little grumpy old man come and uh <laughs> tell us to get out it was sad it was a great pond it was I'm sad. he didn't even think that he told us there's no bass in there too yeah, yeah, we caught a four and a half and a six he was a nuber <laughs> but uh, yeah, apparently we weren't allowed to uh, fish in there, but so we're fishing here. I just missed a strike uh, missed and uh, he missed a three pound goldfish. There was a giant goldfish. I'm, I'm waiting in this. I'm, I'm sitting. What? Dude, I'm getting hits. I don't know what the hell this is. Definitely getting hits. Like little pecks. That might have been bluegill pecks. Dude, every cast I'm getting hits. I don't know what's going on here. It's weird. No. Yeah, I got him. Got him. I, got, I kept getting hits. Finally. The f I told you, dude. It's a little bass. I got five strikes in a row. Finally hook him up. Oh, it's a little guy. Yeah, he's fighting, though. We'll take it. Yeah. The trap's still going strong. Not bad, yeah. That little chunk on the trap right here. Yeah. <laughs> They're bassing here. This pond is super shallow. This is completely little, different. Little one, man. Quarter little ounce. Trap. Yeah. We're, we're pond fishing. Let me go. Uh, I would drop him. I would drop him over, but this pond is like one foot deep all around, so I'm going to walk him over here. All right, buddy. Let's let you go. Uh, there she goes. So this pond is kind of interesting. Right when we walked up, we were just about to leave because it looked like the pond was about two inches deep. Um, the average depth looks to be about a foot and a half, but uh, casting out to the middle, I'm getting my hits. I think it gets to a max depth of about three feet. So it's not an ideal pond. There's probably no giants here, 
Uh, it's a public park, so we might have to go keep pond hopping and uh, look for the next spot. Where'd that hit way out the middle, Rob? Uh, get in there, man. Oh, oh she's good. Rob. There she goes. Rob, she hooks up. Show us what you're using, man. Dude, I'm coming back on the vengeance right now. <laughs> what are you throwing? I'm throwing spot remover with a, just bit off about half a cinco there. Right. Nice job. And, uh, it does the job in these little ponds out here. Yeah. Looking good, you know, with pond was looking debatable to, with the shallow we were just depth, but debating leaving. The next thing we know, boom. It's all my coffee Gonna do some more pond hopping, getting close to the expo, make our way. And uh, Perrick, uh, why is there a bait on your uh, behind? Oh. This is my this is my tackle box for the day. <laughs> That's your tackle box for the day. Yeah. Good luck. Uh -huh. <laughs> you were gonna sit in the car and not know just push you. Yeah. Just sit oh, wait, I got it. Dude, the struggle. Hold on, hold on. This one keeps your baits all nice and untangled, <laughs> and you're set. Hey, whatever, whatever floats your boat, man. We're trying to get to pond number three, and over there is AP Bass, and he's asking some random dude if we can walk through their backyard to get to the lake. We'll see how he does. All right, Perry's coming back after five minutes. That one good? That that's like a private lake that somebody owns, but she said we could fish all those under her name. Said, oh, oh really? Yeah, she said her last name Thompson, and she just said. Perrick, Perrick. What? Yeah. Perrick, right here, man. Hello. Coming through for us, working it. Well, that is what I'm talking about, man. All right, so we don't get to fish the main lake, but we get to fish all these other ponds that are around here. It's gonna be money. Let's go. Oh, fish on. Got one. <laughs> there we go, pond number three. Guys, you can thank AP Bassin for this fish. Nah, small. It's, it's decent, it's decent. Dude, guys, check out AP Bassin. Oh, no, it's a pretty good one. Dude, better than I thought. On the lipless crank. It's like two pounder, two and a quarter. It's right at the top, nice chunk right here. Just swiped at it. Beautiful fish. Man, these Oklahoma ponds, I'm liking it so far. Good stuff. Let it go. Quick release. There she goes. Oh, smoked it right there. Let's see if I get back in there and get him. Well, yeah, I've been fishing this uh, lipless all day. It's one of my favorite pre spawn baits because uh, you can cover a ton of water and you can generate some vicious reaction strikes using it. And uh, this time of year, right after ice out or depending where you are, just starting to get warm again, uh, there isn't that much bait in the water. A lot of the bait dies over the winter. So these bass don't have as much uh, natural food to, uh, to eat. So they're more likely to take your artificial baits. And if you're fishing uh, something like a lipless crankbait covering a lot of water, you can get them to hit it and uh, potentially catch a lot of fish in a short amount of time, which is uh, one reason why I chose this bait versus uh, my other baits I I brought along with my trip, which I'll show you guys uh, in a little bit. Oh, AP Bassin got one. Nice, man. That's my first Oklahoma bass right there. Oh, beautiful. Caught that one on the bigger size right out of Nice. Shot. Exact same color as mine. Yeah. They're hitting it. Yeah, I lost a big one on it about five minutes yeah, ago. Yeah, I saw the dude. <laughs> you had dude. it on a short line and yeah. jumped off. I was walking and I was just like <laughs> pitching my bait out there. Awesome fish. Yeah, I think I'm going to keep keep throwing the trap. Yeah, beautiful fish. Yep. Quick release. Oh, yeah, what look at all this that? stuff. I don't know. Last morning in Oklahoma, had a blast. Unfortunately, no time for fishing today. Got to work the mystery tackle box booth. But uh, before we end the video, I just want to go over how I traveled exactly. I traveled really light because I knew I wouldn't be doing much fishing, if any at all. But uh, so basically, brought my uh, G Loomis travel escape rod that uh, Lake Fork guy hooked me up with. Three piece rod, uh, really portable. It performed really well. I didn't lose a single fish. Um, and I brought it in this. Um, Bass Pro Shops Extreme case right here and it fits uh, on the side of my backpack nicely just bring it as carry-on and then I just brought a little bit of gear the tackle I brought was a li very limited selection um, I didn't want to carry too much because I only brought one backpack so this is the extent this is the extent of my fishing gear that I brought I brought two reels one with fluorocarbon for reaction baits and I brought uh, I brought my seeds with a uh, light braided line right here in case I was throwing uh, some more finesse type stuff and uh, I brought a couple hard baits and I brought uh, a couple plastics. So I'll go ahead and show you what I, how I did it. So I brought uh, some trick worms, zoom trick worms and zoom finesse worms. 
and rigged them up on some uh, shaky heads right here. Uh, those are always some of my go-tos and my favorite color. You can pretty much use them anywhere around the country, I would bet. But uh, it seemed like the bait, the uh, bite was a reaction type bite, so that's why I had these guys right here, which did really well. I brought a couple hard baits, and in order to carry them, travel with them safely, um, and keep them compact, I put these little hook bonnets on them. So I'm not hooking myself. I brought, uh, let's see, three jerk baits, a mega bass, and two lucky crafts, and shad patterns because I thought maybe I'd be fishing Grand Lake possibly, but I ended up not doing that. Then I brought lipless crankbaits, which, as you know, is one of my favorite springtime baits. Had this uh, chrome one right here that uh, I lent to John, and it uh, looks like he did a good number on it right there, bumping to the rocks and stuff. <laughs> That's all good though. Then I got uh, my, my bait of choice for the trip, this quarter ounce trap right here. And uh, one key thing you guys want to bring. So I, I hardly brought any tackle, but if you're gonna bring tackle, make sure you bring some clippers, okay? So you can cut your line. Uh, don't be a novice, don't forget clippers, because then you'll be out there and you won't have anything to cut your line with. Do you bring clippers by chance? And uh, yep, that was basically it. This is all the fishing tackle I brought in. It worked out pretty well. You know, I caught fish. I, I, I didn't have to check any bags in. And you can bring hooks on the plane. You just can't bring like huge saltwater hooks. That, that might be a problem. But uh, yeah, that's about it. And so if you guys are traveling, Bring a, bring a travel rod, bring a couple reels, a couple baits, and uh, try to get out in the water and explore and have some fun catching some fish.